Can you focus? Dang, my forehead is like boom. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Calm down, calm down. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Siani here, back with another video. And as y'all can see from the title in today's video, um, we have a story time and a Q&A about the whole breast reduction situation process. So, you guys want more information on like my experience and like how it went for me, then keep on watching. Before we get into it, please hit the thumbs up if you find this video helpful and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. I posted a vlog of me getting you know the surgery done like a week ago and a lot of y'all was like oh can you do a story time and a lot of y'all had questions about like how I went about it and you know just like questions in general so I decided to bring this story time um, video to y'all and answer y'all questions so basically I'm just gonna be sharing my process and just like all things breast reduction so boom let's start from the beginning I, I, <laughs> I've always had big breasts, like larger breasts, big boobs, always, ever since like middle school, like puberty, ever since I started, you know, developing as a woman, I was just always busty, it was just always big at the top, not at the bottom, and that was like, no, I just, I don't know, I was just really, really insecure about that, um, you know, because of how society deems like how your body should look it just wasn't it wasn't giving so that was already an insecurity of mine um so yeah that's just basically how it was and that's how it was all the way up all the way throughout high school and yeah so basically one day i was in class and i was talking to a friend and she was like oh well one of my friends like she has big breasts too and she was thinking about getting a breast reduction and she was like um yeah she's gonna get like her insurance to pay for it and stuff like that and i'm like huh because i've always wanted to get the surgery done but i never knew that like you can get your your you can have your insurance pay for it and like cover the cost so i'm like oh like that's possible that's cool so um i just you know thought about that and i always kept that in the back of my mind um but i always knew that i wanted to get it done after i turned 18 because i wanted to like think about it you know think on it that's like a big decision getting rid of you know that's a huge decision and i just wanted to you know be 18 i don't know why um and i think that you have to be 18 anyway to get the surgery done but anyway i just knew that i wanted to be 18 so boom i turned 18 fast forward we're out of high school turned 18 and i was like yeah i still want this done like i still want them chopped off um as far as back pain because i know that with a lot of people who have bigger breasts they experience a lot of back pain and stuff like that that was not the case with me at all please hopefully my insurance <laughs> hopefully the insurance people ain't watching this um that wasn't the case with me at all yes i did have back pains like if i was to stand up for a long period of time and stuff like that and it did cause you know issues with issues with like how i you know my posture and stuff like that but as far as like extreme back pain that wasn't me it was just more so like a cosmetic cosmetic standpoint like i wanted it done for the looks more so like more than medical um so yeah when i put on like outfits certain outfits and stuff like that i was just really really insecure i didn't like the way that it looked it just was not balancing like imagine a 5 2 short i'm small everywhere else and then boom boobs like huh like even if you've been following me for a while you can probably see like now i post a lot of body pictures like full body pictures and stuff like that and now i'm just more comfortable with myself but back then all y'all got was like selfies face 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 because i was so insecure about that um, so yeah, when I turned 18, I was still like, yeah, I still want this. So boom, I turned 18 
and I started to do my research, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, Googled online, you know, how to get this done, how to get your insurance to cover, you know, the surgery. And a lot of those videos told me that basically the way to get your insurance to cover your surgery is to convince them that this procedure is medically necessary. Like, it cannot be cosmetic at all. Um, so basically you have to convince your insurance company that you need this because it's causing you so much pain that you cannot bear the pain anymore and you need this shit done. That's basically how you do it. So, um, what I did was I went to my primary doctor, made, a, made an appointment and I was basically like, my back is killing me. Like, I cannot. I can't do this like my back is killing me and the lady was like oh yeah like what do you think is causing this like shh. they never say boobs like you can see it you see these big giant boobs like you know what's causing it but they like to play dumb so like what do you think is causing it like have you did you fall did you injure yourself um how do you sleep do you sleep on your side like what, what the, you know what's causing it it's there or it was there like clear as day but yeah, you have to play dumb in the beginning. You have to play dumb in the beginning. Like, oh no, it's not that. Make sure you tell them like, no, it's not this, it's not that. I didn't do anything. Um, I think it's my boobs and stuff like that. So my first appointment ever, that was just me telling my primary doctor that I'm experiencing pain, like back pain and neck pain. And you have to complain about that over and over and over and over again. You have to. Um, and then she was like, okay, well, I do see that you have large breasts. There's like a term for large breasts. It's like a big ass word. <laughs> um, she was like, oh yeah, like I can see that you have, inserts big ass word. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer you to a, what was it? Physical therapist. Yeah, a physical therapist. And we're going to see if we can like, you know try to solve that problem also what will help as well is 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 if you say that you like get rashes underneath your boobs or around your breast and also indents in your bra my for me i didn't have like indents not indents in your bra indents in your shoulders from your bra because like when you have big breasts it's likely for you to have indents like going into your freaking shoulder crawling at your shoulder because your bra is so tight but i didn't have that problem but some people do um if you do tell them about that tell them every single last thing um and if you don't have rashes underneath like your bra underneath your breast still tell them that you do what they gonna do check like and if they do check just say oh yeah it comes and goes that's what i said like it comes and goes so yeah bitch you don't see it today but it's gonna be here tomorrow first um appointment like complaining about the issue and actually trying to get it done that was in 2021 that was like the mm, that was probably like fall 2021 we're in some we're in the summer of 2022 now so it's it's a long ass process if you want your insurance to pay for it it's a long ass process so be prepared it's about a year year and a half give or take um so yeah that was in the fall of 2022 and she had re she had referred me to a physical therapist and she was like basically go here and try to you know do some exercises some you know what they tell you to do to try to relieve the pain so boom i was going to my physical therapist i was going once a week for like seven months so like from fall all the way to spring in 2021 that's when i was going and doing like the physical therapy stuff and i was going once a week and then after a few months um you should look up your insurance company Look them up online and they should have like if they cover breast reductions they should have like what is it like a list of things that you need like a check a checklist of things that you need in order for them to approve the surgery one of the things that they needed for my um for my insurance was 
at least seven months of like physical therapy or proof that you tried to like fix the problem without getting a surgery so i went for exactly seven months they said at least i went for exactly seven months and once that seven months was up i was like oh no this isn't working so i went back to the same doctor my primary care doctor and i was like i did this whole physical therapy thing it's not working it's not working at all please whole time i didn't even have any pains <laughs> she was like um okay well i'll refer you to I'll refer you to a plastic surgeon. So now we started to talk surgery. Yeah, that's not working. Oh yeah, and by the way, when I complained about the um, the rashes underneath and around my breast, she also prescribed me like cream for that. So I had cream for that, and she also and she also prescribed me pain meds as well for my back. So I had stuff prescribed to me and girl i was going to physical therapy for month, months a few months seven months so you just want to have that record you want to have that paper trail of you trying to do things to trying to do things yourself to relieve the pain because if you just go in there like oh i want a surgery i want surgery they're not going to do it they want you to take steps on your own basically yeah so after that she was like all right i'm gonna refer you to a plastic surgeon and you can basically have a consultation with her and see what's up so that's what she did and this was probably hmm, when was this this was probably in the beginning of 2022 so like winter 2022 is when i got um my consultation with the plastic surgeon so I went to the plastic surgeon's office. She took pictures of my breasts and we talked and she was like, well, what size are you? What size do you wanna be? And my doctor, I love her so much. I love her so much. Hopefully y'all can find a doctor that actually wants to take care of you because my doctor, she was a blessing. She really was. Um, so yeah, she basically, you know, was like, oh yeah, I've done this for a while. Make sure you get a doctor who is experienced, who do this for real, this procedure, who does this procedure. And also, um, make sure you try to get a doctor who understands like the process of going through your insurance. Because if you get a doctor who has patients who normally, who normally just pay out of pocket, and when you come into office, they're gonna be like, they're not gonna like judge you like oh she's paying with insurance but they're not really gonna know like the ins and outs of you know helping you get the surgery because my surgeon actually helped me like i don't know what she did behind the scenes but she actually helped me so make sure you try to get a doctor who's you know on board knows that you're paying or wants to pay with insurance and who's there to help you um so yeah that day she took pictures of my breast to send to the insurance company um and then she also provi she also provided all of the documents from my primary care doctor to the insurance company so when you go in for that consultation i don't know consultation excuse me when you're go when you go in for that consultation i don't know if it's different for everybody for me my doctor sent all that stuff to my insurance company but i've heard stories where girls had to do that on their own luckily i didn't have to but yeah she sent them the pictures of you know how my breasts looked before and then she also sent um evidence or proof that i tried to take care of the problem by myself which was the stuff that they prescribed me the medication and also all of those months of physical therapy oh yeah and then they actually oh yeah i'm missing it hold on hold on hold on <laughs> hold on before um getting a consultation with the breast surgeon with the surgeon they actually sent me to a chiropractor kind of it wasn't really a chiropractor a chiropractor it was something else it was some other bone doctor they sent me to him and he tried to insert inject some stuff into my back to try to make the pain go away and i was like no i'm not doing that like I'm not doing that so yeah they did they are gonna try to send you to either a chiropractor or somebody else I forgot the name of that specific doctor but it's like a bone doctor <laughs> um 
and yeah he tried to inject something in my back and i was like no i'm not doing that because it was too close to my spine and it's not giving paralyzed no it never gave that for some boobs so i was like no i'm not doing that um and then they actually took a, an x-ray of my back as well i'm not sure what the results came back from that i never really checked because that doctor had me messed up you're not injecting anything and he was basically like he was an older doctor it didn't seem like he knew what freaking breast reductions were at all he probably did i'm pretty sure he did because he was a doctor but he was just an older white male and it just didn't feel like he had any like you're a doctor you know what's up but i feel like unless you're like a woman you don't really know because you've never experienced that before um so yeah they did send me to him and i was like i'm not doing that so then i had to go back to my primary care doctor and let them know that it was nothing that he could do for me and then that's when she sent me to the plastic surgeon so boom i had missed that step so yeah it, that was that step and then boom i went to the plastic surgeon that's when she took the pictures and all the extra stuff so yeah she sent all that stuff to the um insurance people and then a couple of months later i was just praying like this whole time hearing waiting to hear back from the insurance company i was praying and stuff like that like i hope they approve me um i hope, I, I hope that i get i hope that i get approved and a couple a couple weeks later not a couple weeks a couple months it was just taking a long ass time for them to reach back out so i was like i called my mom and i was like can you like call that doctor and ask them like what's the hold up like what's taking what's taking them so long so she called them and the lady at the front desk was basically like oh siani she's been oh i didn't send my whole cover it was like oh siani he's been approved um to get the surgery mind you when they approve you they're supposed to send out a letter or something i never got that letter so they was like oh yeah she's been approved like her sir i mean her insurance like approved her like they're going to pay for her surgery um but her doctor i would say her name but i don't that was like but her doctor she's like taking a lot of patients right now and mind you this was like in hmm i want to say like february of 2022 she was like um she's taking a lot of patients right now so she's probably she's not scheduled to get this surgery until september of 2022 september mm, your girl got school i'm not even gonna be in philly in september i'm gonna be in chicago so how i'm gonna get my breasts done it just wasn't given so um basically on the phone she was like yeah like that's all we have like her surgeon the doctor like she has a lot of patients she can't do it until september so my mom was basically like all right well keep her on the list keep her scheduled for september um but we're gonna try to find another surgeon because once your insurance says that they're going to cover it i'm pretty sure it doesn't matter which surgery which surgeon which doctor you go to um they're still going to cover it so after i got that news i was hyped i was happy a couple weeks later the paper actually came in the mail that stated oh yeah you've been approved i was jumping up and down i was screaming i was so excited because sometimes your insurance they give you the runaround like oh no you're denied because so and so because i remember when i got my braces um when i was getting my braces the first time that I applied to get braces through my insurance, they had denied me. And I'm like, girl, why you deny me? Y'all see these teeth. But the second time around, they approved me. So sometimes they deny you at first and then they approve you. But I, I had actually got approved the first time around. So I was super, super excited about that so happy jumping up and down but i was still like heartbroken because she said that she couldn't do it she because she said that she couldn't do it until september and i was going to be away at school like there's no way in hell so um after getting that news i was like okay let me do some more research i'm gonna try to find another surgeon and see if he can do it see if they can do it for me um so I did that. I went to go see another surgeon. He took pictures too, which was kind of weird because I was already approved. Like, what are you taking pictures for? But okay. He took pictures too. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, I never heard back from him. Once he took them pictures and once we talked about it and I had already told him like, oh yeah, I'm already approved, da 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 da. Um, I never heard back from him. And also during that visit, he was telling me how when you get your breast done, when you get a breast reduction, there's a possibility for your, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to like scare nobody, but there's a possibility for your nipples to not heal back. Child, that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> because he was telling me how like if they don't heal, then they're going to have to like tattoo a fake nipple on to you and stuff like that. And just the terminology that he was using, the wording that he used was just so scary. And when I had my first consultation with my first doctor, she didn't mention that at all. And he was like, "Oh yeah, when you had your consultation, when you had your consultation with your other doctor did she mention that and I was like no she didn't mention that at all and he was like yeah that's probably because like she was gonna wait until you got on until you actually got on the table to like say something about it but I'm just looking out for you because there's like a possibility for you know, you know your nipples to like be gone mm, no that just scared the fuck out of me so um yeah, so after that visit, I left feeling super, super uneasy about the whole situation because, you know, I'd rather have big boobs with my nipples than no nipples at all and having to get them tattooed. Like, who wants tattooed nipples? And no offense to people with tattooed nipples because I know that sometimes you have no choice, especially especially for those who have, like, um, breast cancer and stuff like that. I know that sometimes, like, your nipple is going no offense at all like but like if I had a choice which I did like I, I'm young I was like 18 at the time I'm 19 now like what 19 year old wants to walk around like with no nipples if they have a choice not to so I was super super uneasy about that once I left that doctor's visit um but I was like okay whatever so I was waiting for him to get back to me um on whether or not like he can do it but he never did I reached out to him multiple times he never did so at this point I was just like fuck that surgery <laughs> I can't get it at this point in my head I was like I can't get the surgery because my surgeon my first lady she was like oh I can't do it until September I'm not even gonna be here in September and then this dude he's not even saying anything back like I just can't get it so I just left it alone I was just gonna wrap my big boobs and just call it I was just gonna call it a day um and just get the surgery like later down the line like when I was like actually grown and like you know I had everything figured out I was just like okay I'll just wait to get the surgery in the future um so yeah some months had passed mind you that was in that was back in like february of 2022 um so yeah fast forward months had passed and i was just like fuck the surgery i was already approved by my insurance but it just wasn't looking good for me so i was just like forget it um but yeah one night i was scrolling on tiktok <laughs> and it was actually june 7th please I remember today it was June 7th and it was 10 o'clock at night and I was in bed and I was scrolling through TikTok and this girl had did a before and after video of her surgeon so basically I mean her surgery so basically she did like trying on tops before and after my breast reduction so like she had the big boobs then she tried on the top and she had her small boobs and her body just looked so good it just looked so much like better because she was like proportioned and everything just looked better and i was just like dang that could be you like you got approved siani that could be you why are you just sitting here and not even doing anything so that's when i was like oh no i can't i can't let this opportunity pass me so i text my mom and i was just like can you text the lady <laughs> the surgeon my doctor from the beginning the lady who said that she was going to do it um and see like is there any way that she can do it closer because i have school um see if there's any patients that kind of like backed out see if there's any like sooner spots left for me to get the surgery done and yeah she, it was 10 o'clock at night so she texted me back she was like yeah i'll text her in the morning um i'll call her in the morning excuse me so the next morning she called her and she was like good news 
I just get so excited thinking about this because it just really happened so freaking quick. I text my mom that night, June 7th, and my surgery was June 27th. Like, that shit happened so freak, so quick. It just happened so quick. So, um, she was like, good news she can do it like i told her about like the whole school situation um how you're not going to be in philly you know how you're going away for college um for school and she said that she'll do it like she can bump you up but it's quick like she <laughs> she said but the surgery date is going to be june 27th mind you this was like june freaking 8th and I'm just like, dang, this shit happening so quick. So like now I gotta prepare myself. Cause I thought she was gonna say, oh, like I'll do it like August 1st or something like that, you know, a whole month later. But she was actually like, no, like she'll do it. So I was super, super happy, so excited about that. And that's basically how I ended up getting it, getting it done, getting the surgery done. Um, that was my whole process. Just doing a lot of research. Um, watching a lot of videos of how other people got it done and following exactly what they said do like I followed exactly what they said do you have to make it seem like you're in ex extreme pain if you are great if you are not girl a little white lie ain't gonna hurt you <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you um so yeah that's basically that's basically how I got it done I started this whole process in 2021 it's like the end of 2022 it's summer of 2022 and that's basically like how long it took me sometimes it's faster sometimes it's longer like i watched a couple of videos where some people was like oh it took me years like literally years to get this done um so yeah it's different for everybody i'm just blessed that she was able to like fit me in um and yeah that's how i got it done now surgery day a lot of people wanted to know like what happened the day of my surgery and like you know like the whole process so i had three appointments all in like week like a week time span if that makes sense so like one appointment was one week the other appointment was the next week and then that next week was my surgery date so the first appointment that i had it was just us talking about like how i wanted my breasts to look the size um it was my opportunity to ask her questions um and i definitely asked her about the nipple situation because that was my biggest that was my biggest concern like girl he said then my nipple was probably not gonna heal and she was basically like yeah there is a possibility so yes there is a possibility for your nipple to not heal i'm so glad that mine did <laughs> so glad but yes that's just a risk that, that's just a risk that you're gonna have to take as well as like um breastfeeding you're probably not going to be able to breastfeed after and that's fine too for me um it just depends on how much you want this done and also um nipple sensation like filling your nipples there's a possibility for you not to get that feeling back um we can talk about my nipple sensation and everything in a few minutes um but yeah she we was just talking like technical stuff like the surgery and like how i wanted them to look sizing stuff like that so yeah that was the first appointment the second appointment was anesthesia they took my blood um they had asked like the hard questions like say if you were on a table and you had to have blood you had to be given blood in order to save your life like would you take it that was just basically that appointment um and just basically seeing if i was a good fit to go you know under and then the next appointment was my actually my actual surgery date um so yeah the day of my surgery y'all kind of saw that um i went in there waited they had me pee in a cup <laughs> um then i went back they put the iv in and then i went to sleep woke up boom and they were done um i'm trying to think pain when i first woke up i didn't experience any pain at all like it wasn't painful at all i was high on meds 
I was high on meds and the anesthesia was still like wearing off so my voice was super super like raspy and it was just a high behind vest my voice is raspy anyway but um yeah and when you're under they put a tube down your throat so the most pain that i had was like from my throat to be honest and i also experienced like really really bad period really really bad period cramps like every month so um my pain tolerance is through the roof like my period my period cramps are the worst that's the worst pain that i've ever felt every single month feeling that pain is the worst so this my boobs was nothing it did not hurt not one time like not one bit it feels like if i had to compare it for me it felt like um you know how like when you were like a kid and you would like fall and scrape your knee or something like that and then your knee would be sore and like you feel that pain that's exactly what it feels like it's just sore because you have a bunch of cuts it's just sore um I didn't have any drain tubes because I know a lot of people have drains. I didn't have any of those. Um, it was literally just the stitches and they're dissolvable. So like they didn't have to take them out. Um, a lot of people, if you don't have drains, the next appointment, um, your follow-up post-op appointment, they actually take a needle and drain all of the liquid out of your boobs. I did not have to experience that at all. This process was super, super easy for me like super easy for me and my doctor was my doctor is like the best doctor ever she's just like me like we're both I can tell that she's just like me like introverted um she just gets right to the point and I love that and she's also very very helpful like she didn't have to take the time to fit me in before school like she could have been like oh no I can't do it but she actually took the time to actually fit me in and I really just appreciate that because this experience this surgery was really life-changing for me I've wanted this um surgery done ever since I was like in middle school ever since I started growing big giant boobs and I was the only girl in the freaking classroom with huge behind boobs um so yeah super super life-changing they look great like even with the scars they look amazing um and then also a lot of you guys asked like what the scarring looked like um there's two different scars that i know that they might do the lollipop method or the anchor the lollipop is basically when they take um the incision and they go around your nipple and then down and then the anchor is exactly what it sounds like they do around down and then they go like that so it's kind of like an anchor I'll put photos up just for you guys to see I had the anchor well I have the anchor so that's what my scars look like it's around the nipple and then it's down and then it's underneath the breast fold which you really cannot see um, the only scar that you can really see is the scar that goes down because like it's down but around my nipple you can't really see that scar because my nipple is dark please my nipple is dark <laughs> but yeah like you can't see it and then around the breast fold it's down like in the crease so you can't really see that either um but yeah even with the scars they look amazing um so just imagine when the scars fade and you know you put cocoa butter or whatever scarring treatment on it it'll just look great um so yeah that's pretty much how my experience went um i asked y'all on instagram to give me some questions so i'm just about to look through that and any questions that i did not answer throughout the story time i'm just about to answer it so someone asked how much was the surgery the surgery was free for me <laughs> it was free um yeah i didn't have to pay for anything Oh, I did have to pay for my med my medicine. Yeah, my medication. I had to pay for that. But that wasn't that much. Um, they prescribed me four different med medications. Four different things. They prescribed me freaking Oxy and shit like that. I didn't take that. Because I didn't have to. Because it really didn't hurt. I took medicine for like the first three days. Just because I was scared to kind of like let the medicine wear off i was scared to i was like i'm not letting this shit wear off because if it wear off it's gonna hurt but once i did let the medication wear off you really couldn't feel it at all 
um and it's also uncomfortable to sleep too because you can't sleep on your rest and you can't sleep on your side and i am a freaking stomach sleeper i'm not a back sleeper at all i sleep on my stomach and on my side so that was super super uncomfortable but i am three weeks in yeah like three weeks in and now i sleep on my stomach i'm not supposed to at all but i do it anyway <laughs> i do it anyway because i don't know i just find myself doing it um and when i do i always try to like sit up and you know try not to but if that happens then it happens <sighs> Someone asks, what size did you start at compared to the size now? So, I started at, I started at a triple D. I'm pretty sure that wasn't my size. But I got my bras from Victoria's Secret. Um, they have the best, mm, not the best. But they have this one specific bra. And it's like a lightly lined bra. I'm going to try to pull it. I'm going to try to link it down below. Um, if you have big breasts and you're trying to find like a good supportive bra because it's super super hard to find bras when you have big breasts but that bra was my favorite bra because with me when I had big boobs I did not like padded bras I did not like padded bras at all because that added on to the big the bigness the big <laughs> like that added on like when you have a big ass pad and them pads be so big like they be so big I did not want that so I got a lightly lined bra from Victoria's Secret. It was underwired, so it was still supportive, and I just love that bra so much because it did not add on to the size, but it was still supportive. So I'll link that down below. Um, that bra size was a triple D, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't like my actual size because Victoria's Secret, Victoria's Secret don't they don't know what they're doing. They do not know how to freaking measure your freaking size, so they're just gonna tell you anything. So I was probably like a freaking I don't know like an e or an f oh yeah mind you i lost a lot of weight as well i lost a lot of weight um so my breasts used to be huge and super super full and just big but i lost a lot of weight and they got smaller and then also i had a lot of extra sick uh I had a lot of extra skin so mm -mm, it just gave sag and um yeah so i'm pretty sure like that changed as well but overall my size before was a triple d um i'm not sure what size i am now i need to get them sized right now i've just been wearing surgical surgical bras and um and for surgical bras they don't really have the cup size they just have your band um but yeah i'll go get that measured soon <laughs> So I can see like what size I am. But my boobs look great. Like they're not too small. And they're not too big. Which I love. I just feel like they fit me. I have one black so you can't really see. But yeah. Please. You can't really see. But I do feel like they are the perfect size for me. So yeah, that's that question. Someone asks, why did you have to get a breast reduction? Um, I didn't have to get a breast reduction. I wanted to get a breast reduction. Yeah, basically. I didn't have to. I wanted to because I did experience some back pain. Not extreme. Like, I could live. Um, and then also, like, just the way that my breast looked. It was just, ugh. The way that they looked and the way that they made my body look. Like, girl, I lost all this weight for me to be outside like a hot girl. Yeah, very much hot girl. Um, these ones gotta, yeah, they have to even on my body now. Thank you. So, yeah. Uh, someone asks, how did you go about getting the surgery done? I already answered that question. Basically, you want to just tell your, if you want to get, if you want to get it covered by insurance just tell them that your shit hurt and you cannot live you can't breathe oh my god my back my back my back it hurts that's what you have to say and you have to keep saying it even if they deny you still say it it hurts like y'all are my insurance i'm paying y'all yeah they have to do it <laughs> eventually they have to do it and i was gonna keep on doing that shit too I was going to keep on doing it. If they would have denied me, I would have kept doing it. Like, y'all have to. What you mean denied? Denied. Like, if your boobs are really big and 
like if it's apparent that you really need the surgery they're gonna like they can't deny you you can't and if you even if they do um no what happened mm -mm. um someone said price i already told y'all it was free for me i only had to pay for my meds and then bras of course you know stuff like that how long did it how long did it take to get a consultation and then the surgery were you covered yes i was covered how long did it take the con how long did it take to get a consultation i'd probably say like a year from the first time that i actually told my primary care doctor that i wanted this done and like it was hurting from talking to the surgeon it was about a year yeah and then once I got that consultation I got the consultation like February of 2022 and my surgery date was in June of 2022 so a few months pain um it did not hurt for me I watched a lot of breast reduction videos, a lot of vlogs, and some of these girls was like, oh yeah, that shit hurt. So I was going in expecting the worst. I was going in expecting the worst pain ever, but it did not hurt at all. I'm trying to tell y'all, like for me, it did not hurt at all. Not one bit. And they say not to like reach your arms up and stuff like that, but girl, I was a couple days in reaching my arms up, walking around. Like, it really does not hurt. But it all depends on the person. Any advice? Hmm. If you really want to get it, if you really want to get it done, I'd say go for it. Um, if you want to get it covered by your insurance go for it and don't stop even if they deny you um follow all of the steps that i told y'all to take basically all of those steps will all of those steps will ensure that you're indicating <laughs> that your your back really hurts and you really need the surgery your insurance is only going to cover the surgery if they think that it's medically necessary if they feel like you're getting it done because you want the look of new boobs they're not gonna cover it they're not gonna cover it but if you go through that physical therapy like i did if you get medication prescribed like i did if you say that you have rashes like i did um if you go to a chiropractor or the bone doctor like i did if you get an x-ray done like i did those are all like reasons and evidence shown that girl I tried like this is medically necessary like my shit hurt I want something to relieve the pain the breasts they're causing the pain I need this to be relieved basically that's what you want to say that's what you want to give off don't say that oh I'm insecure about my breasts don't go in the office like I'm insecure about how they look even though we both know you are girl I know you are because I was too oh I'm insecure about how they look I don't like them I don't like the way that they make my body look I don't like the no don't go in no girl as far as they know as far as you know you love your boobs you love how you look you're you're secure you're very much in love with yourself the reason why you want this done and the only reason why you want this done is because your back your back is killing you that's all like don't go in there oh uh, i don't like it no you're in pain you're in pain you're in pain you're in pain that's the only way that the, your insurance is going to cover it. You're in pain. Um, what else? Yeah, that's the advice that I'd that I'd give if you want it in covered. If you want it covered by your insurance, um, advice for like post op, I'd probably just say follow with your follow what your surgery your surgeon <laughs> tells you to do um everybody's surgeon is different everybody's doctor is different some people have drains some people don't some people get the lollipop some people don't um so yeah just follow directions do exactly what they say do and you should be good I hope and pray that everybody who's considering or getting the surgery done I pray that y'all nipples heal 
because that's crazy it's a bad drawing if your nipples don't heal oh but yeah my nipples healed i said that i was gonna circle back and i never circled back my nipples they they, they healed i'm fine um i can't feel anything though the sensation they're not there um i feel a little pressure but my nipples was very very sensitive before like if i was to do this i can feel that shit but if i was to do that now i can't really feel that so yeah sometimes it the sensation will come back and then sometimes it won't um they say that it takes like a year for your breast to fully heal and for you to get that feeling back um i don't really care <laughs> i don't really care if you get your nipples sucked and you care about that then maybe consider that but everybody has their limits like how far would you go how far would you go how far would you go <laughs> to get this to get it done uh, would you take that risk of your nipples not healing I did I knew the risk going in there I knew that it was a possibility that I'd have to come out and tattoo nipples onto my titties and I still did it so how far would you go but yeah that's 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 the advice someone asked were you scared yes I was scared I was super excited though because I really really been wanting this for so long so long um ever since I found out about the surgery which was like middle school eighth grade ish and I've been wanting it done ever since so I was super super excited I feel like my excitement trumped my fear definitely um and actually just wanting it done especially like how i dress please this was definitely way more um cosmetic for me than it was medically but i told them that my back was hurting which is how i got my shit done but how i dress like the stuff that i would want to put on i would put it on and it just would not look right because it would just get pee like pushing pee like it was just giving pee and it just was not looking right at all but now i can wear whatever i want i can wear halter tops i don't have to wear a bra i can wear tube tops now i can't wait i can't wait um so yeah that aspect of it me just being excited i feel like that trumped me being scared um but i definitely was especially about the nipple since the nipple stuff that's what scared me the most i wasn't really afraid about like pain and stuff like that i don't know why because i knew that it would it would it would have been temporary like the pain would have been temporary um luckily it wasn't painful at all for me but if it was painful it's just gonna be painful for a little while it's gonna be painful for a little while and then it'll go away eventually um so i wasn't really scared about that it was just like my nipples <laughs> that was just the biggest thing for me but everything turned out well everything turned out great i am healing well everything looks great um i had my first post-op appointment uh like a week ago and yeah she said everything looked good that's basically it i have my next appointment um, right before I leave for college which is in August so next month can't wait <laughs> I'm so excited oh and then just like the timeline the timing was just everything for me please this bump you're done the timing was everything for me too like going to college with like new boobs please new boobs who this so I know <laughs> but yeah it's just everything just worked out perfectly i'm super super happy super blessed i thank god like every day for this if it wasn't for that tiktok video <laughs> then i would have been sitting here with the same boobs because i just gave up at that point i just felt so defeated that man was not texting back <laughs> at all i couldn't find any other surgeons in philly either because i'm in philly like there's not a lot of options there's not a lot of options especially options that take your insurance company because i have a certain a specific type of insurance there's not a lot of options there's not a lot of doctors who take that who take my insurance so it was just very very limited um and he wasn't texting back she's talking about some in september 
mm, no that's not gonna work um so yeah i have felt super super defeated but i think that tiktok video was a sign it was it was but i was like no ziani you're getting them you're getting them done and then i sent that text and i was like hey can you reach back out and she reached out and she said boom and it just happened so quick so fast it's everything just boom 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 just happened so yeah i'm super super happy super blessed about that um but yeah that pretty much sums up this video this video is probably going to be long as fuck like an hour long video um but yeah that's it i hope i answered all y'all questions if i didn't then just leave them down below and i'll reply back i reply back to everybody so just comment down below any other questions that you have i got y'all it was basically the story time of my whole process leading up to now i hope y'all enjoyed this video again i hope y'all found it helpful i hope i answered your questions if you had any thoughts i hope i touched base on that um if i did please 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 give this video a huge thumbs up it takes a second thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed hit the subscribe button because we are back your girl about to move to chicago the vlogs are coming the back to school college videos decorate my dorm with me all of those videos are coming so if you're interested in that then hit the subscribe button and stick around and yeah all of my social medias will be down below it's siani marie siani marie whatever you want to say <laughs> it's siani marie everywhere um on all platforms and i'll see y'all in the next video thank you so so much for watching bye